I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Have you noticed a whole bunch of people have been using two Omni antennas on their goggles? Aren't you supposed to use one Omni and one patch antenna, and that like that's how diversity works? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. When it's better to use two Omni antennas versus an Omni and a patch? Stay tuned. So let's start this video with a little bit of a disclaimer. The real way to discuss antenna propagation is to use a thing called an anechoic chamber, which is an RF isolated room where you can really find out what antennas are doing. Well, those are expensive. I haven't got one. And so let's just take this video as a demonstration of principles and not necessarily a like super rigorous AB comparison. And the great thing is that the effects I'm going to talk about are so blatant that we could demonstrate the principles even in my here in my yard. And the first thing I want to do is I want to turn the output power down as low as possible to 25 milliwatts so that I don't have to fly the quad very far to demonstrate the effects that I'm going to uh, demonstrate. Now, we'll take the quad off and we're going to fly it a little ways away. And I think I should be able to do this. I know that one of the weakest spots on my property is over here behind the barn. And at 25 milliwatts, I know I usually start to experience some breakup. Okay, perfect. Perfect. We're getting tons of breakup. In fact, just looking at the screen here, I've got a like an almost staticky, perfectly staticky image. Let's see. If the, yeah, the DVR is also picking up a really staticky image. Now, this being a directional antenna means that it's going to get better coverage in one direction and worse coverage in another direction. Antennas increase their gain by focusing their transmission and reception patterns. A great analogy for that is like if you've got a, a flashlight with an adjustable beam that can go all the way from a wide beam all the way down to a pencil beam. The light bulb inside the flashlight is putting out the same amount of light. It's just you're focusing it one place and making it brighter but dimmer everywhere else or you're spreading it out. And that's exactly what directional antennas do. So if we point this antenna over toward the quad, the signal comes in pretty strong. And if we point the antenna away, the signal gets a lot weaker. That's the directionality. What I want you to see is that directionality is both in the horizontal and the vertical direction. So if I aim over at the quad and then tilt down, I see a big drop off. And if I tilt up, I see a big drop off. And we can even try to kind of see the beam width of the antenna roughly by moving left and right. Oh, interesting. That's the strongest by far. And it's getting weaker weaker and yeah it really doesn't start to completely break up until I get almost like 90 degrees to the side. Now if we take an omnidirectional antenna like this one is the Lumineer Axie 2. Uh, Lumineer's just released a new uh, generation of their Axie antennas uh, and I thought that would be a good opportunity to demonstrate these effects. So if we take an omni antenna, an omnidirectional antenna has equal coverage in 360 degree range. So if we take this antenna and we rotate it like this, we should see roughly equal coverage in all directions. But in reality, we're going to find that that's not true because, like, look at this from the top down. On this side of the antenna, there's nothing, 
and on the back side of the antenna there's the goggles kind of messing with the coverage pattern. So when you put an omni antenna on a goggle, it's not truly omnidirectional, especially if you're using a stubby antenna like this. The stubby antenna is going to be down near the goggle. It's going to be interfered with more. If you've got an antenna with sticking up just a little bit, well, your head, your face is still in the way, but it's still a little bit. So this is kind of the worst case in terms of omnidirectional coverage. But how good is it? If I turn the antenna this direction, look, as I move it around, I'm getting roughly the same coverage until I get to about here. The goggle gets in the way, and then it just completely breaks up. So it's not quite as good, but here's the difference with the Omni antenna. It's not quite as strong as the patch antenna, but it is more consistent as we go around in a 360 degree pattern. Interestingly, Omni antennas still have a dead spot directly above and below themselves. So they're still sensitive. They're in the um, front to back axis. Watch what happens as I tilt this forward. Immediately it starts to drop out. And it should be weakest when the very top of the antenna is pointed directly at the quad. The reason pilots run two Omnis on their goggles is that it gives the most consistent 360 degree coverage. If you take one Omni and you put, oh boy, I'm going to break something. I have to twist that on too tight. There we go. If you take one Omni and you put it on like this and the other Omni and you, this is one thing about the Luminaire uh, stubbies there. You got to have a little wrench to tighten down the second one, otherwise you, they bump into each other. <laughs> if you put one on like this and one on like that, so they are 90 degrees to each other, <laughs> the dead spot of one is perfectly covered by the strong spot of the other. Two Omni antennas, 90 degrees to each other, gives you a per perfect 360 degree sphere of coverage. But is it better or worse than if, why would you not just want to put a patch on there? The truth is that an Omni and a patch will usually give you better coverage as long as you know that at least some of the time you're going to be flying in the direction that the patch is aimed. So if you've got an obstacle like my barn that you know you're going to need to punch through, if you're flying at a bando and you're standing outside the bando aiming in, a patch is going to be helpful. If you've got a long field and then at the end of the field there's some trees you're going to play with, a patch will help you reach out and get that coverage out there but a patch gives you less consistent coverage. So if you've got that patch on your goggles and you drop your head, now the patch is aimed at the ground, the Omni antenna is in its weakest spot, and whoop, you're done. Now let's face it, a lot of people do move their heads around a lot when they are flying. That's the biggest weakness of a patch. Next time you're at a race or at a freestyle session, look at all the people flying and look how many of them have a patch on their goggle and they're like this. What's the point? And that's why a lot of pilots are going with two Omni antennas. Now, if you have a traditional diversity module, two Omni antennas is not going to be as helpful for you as if you have one of the newer modules like Rapid Fire, Clearview, and True DX. These modules, and especially the Rapid Fire, which is the one that I personally use on a day to day basis, these are just so freaking good that even with two Omnis, in my experience, they will often beat an Omni and a patch on a traditional diversity module. Long story short, if you have something like a rapid fire, try two Omni antennas. If you don't hold your head steady while you fly, think about whether a patch antenna is really giving you the benefit that it would have. If you have something like a rapid fire, compare your coverage with two Omni antennas to your buddy's coverage with an Omni and a patch. You may be doing better than him even though you're using a lower gain antenna. And if you have traditional a traditional diversity module, you could try two Omnis, but probably you're going to be better with an Omni and a patch. There's one more thing to talk about in this video, and that is, should you be using a stubby versus a, a longer antenna? And I got to say, since I switched to these Axie stubby antennas, I do notice a reduction in range. I fly all over this property all over the time, and I have a very, very good sense of where I should and shouldn't get breakup. And I am getting more breakup 
with these guys than when I was using two separate antennas on stocks. And I'm pretty sure that the reason for that is that, again, look how close, look, this guy especially, the bottom one is totally getting occluded by the goggles, whereas when they're both sticking up, they're only occluded by my head, but that's something. So I do think you're going to get a reduction in performance if you go to these stubbies, but it sure is nice to just have them on there. And if it's good enough, then maybe that's a viable trade-off. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I hope this has helped answer some of your questions about why you're seeing pilots running two Omnis versus an Omni and a patch. Thanks also to Luminaire. They sent me this their new Axie 2 antenna. It's the next revision of the Luminaire Axie. It's always been a pretty good antenna. And I love the fact that this little stubby version here has built-in right angle adapter. So it just is like one piece and totally ready to go. Link to that down in the video description if you want to go check these out. They also have the, ver the regular, the non-stubby version if that's what you're into. I might switch to those. Hmm. We'll have to see. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy flying.